So what I wanted to show you now is this idea of apparent brightness and luminosity. By the way, I had a lot of fun making this picture. <laughs> Uh, it's a little bit creepy, I know. All right, so these these uh, concepts that I discussed before, this idea of apparent brightness, uh, that's the first really important one. So we'll say uh, what it is here. So apparent brightness is actually, um, yeah, how a star appears from Earth. Um, oops, how a star, how a star appears. This is why it's called apparent, right? Appears on Earth. So this is what it looks like. Now, uh, well, let's talk about luminosity. That's actually the power um, emitted from the star. So this is going to be the key thing right here. So emitted from the star. So what we're going to do with this then is um, let's look at the units for these. The power emitted. Remember what the unit of power is? What's the unit of power? It's a watt. Remember, or it could also be a joule per second, right? That's another unit for uh, this. So we're looking at how a star actually appears on Earth. So the luminosity, remember, that's the intrinsic property of the star, whereas apparent brightness, that's this effect of distance, right? So further ones appear dimmer. So how a star appears on Earth, it's going to be the power, but it's going to be every meter squared. So we're going to take that power and we're going to project it onto a meter squared. So it's going to be in watts per meter squared. If you look carefully at this equation, then we're going to have these same concepts here. So this is the letter we use right here, apparent brightness. We're going to use the letter B and luminosity. We're going to use the letter L for it. So lowercase b for apparent brightness and luminosity for uppercase L here. So what we do then is we take this luminosity, the power emitted from a star, and because it goes out in all directions, right, it goes out into a sphere, doesn't it? And think about this then, if it's over a sphere, this power that's emitted in all directions, uh, the effective distance is that it's going to be based on this surface area of a sphere. So that's why we have the 4 pi d squared comes in. Right? That's actually the surface area of a sphere. So 4 pi d squared, and then we have b. So we know what b is, it's apparent brightness, it's in watts per meter squared, it's what we measure on Earth. This is easy to get, okay, that's going to be the key thing right here. This is easy to measure. The key thing then is going to be in astronomy then, I mean this is easy to get, This is you just measure it today, right? Just put that light onto a little detector, what's the size of that detector, that's your meter squared, how many watts came in, boom, you have your apparent brightness. Luminosity, however, is much harder. In fact, a lot of the time we're going to be spending uh, is going to be looking at how to get luminosity or a proxy for luminosity. So in this case right here, we have apparent brightness is equal to luminosity over 4 pi d squared. And this is why, if you look at the units then, we had um, luminosity, which is in watts, and then divided by 4 pi d squared. 4 pi has no units, but d squared, well, what do you think d is? d is the distance to the star. And it's going to be measured in meters. This is going to be the really important thing. The distance to the star is going to be in meters. This is like the, the proper equation with the proper units. A lot of astronomers like to use another. It's a more antiquated system. Uh, it's called um, apparent uh, um, magnitude. Sorry. So we have uh, apparent and absolute magnitude. This is a weird scale. But I think the one right here, uh, this is a good scale to use here. So this is meters and Everything is in watts or joules or meters squared. So everything has nice units, SI units. We have something else I want to discuss. is uh, the luminosity of the sun. We're going to use some notation here. So one of the really important things here is that the luminosity of the sun, let's maybe define it here. We're going to write a symbol for it. So if we say luminosity of the sun, well, luminosity is an L. Just like mass of the sun, well, that's going to be a capital M. However, to say it's a sun, instead of saying an S, like you would think, we actually put a circle, and we uh, put a little dot in the middle. So every time you see, it could also be like radius of the sun, will be capital R with that little circle with a dot. That little dot, that uh, circle with a dot, that means sun. So you can look it up, or you could be told this, you know, so you might be told, oh, the luminosity of the sun is this many watts. Uh, then you use that, right, or the mass of the sun, for example. Uh, what is the luminosity of the sun? I think it's 10 to the 26, uh, something like that. The mass of the sun is on the order of 10 to the 30, I think, kilograms, something like that. Um, 
So here we go, we have the important equation right here. And now the key then in astronomy is to get distances to things. We want to know how far away is something. In order to know how far it is then, because we can't go out there and measure it, we can't go, well, I guess you can for the closest things. But really in astronomy, if you want to measure something, this is the key way we do it. This is the main physics behind what we're going to be using. The idea will be this, to get d, to get that distance, that lowercase d in this equation, what we're going to be doing then is trying to find some way of determining L, the luminosity. Because remember, all stars have different luminosities, right? So remember, B is easy to measure. D is what we want to find. So we need some way of telling L, the luminosity. This is going to be the way we're going to do most of astronomy. Because if you want to know about the universe, it helps to know where things are located. So you can know structures and if things are moving and all the dynamics needed. So this is going to be really key to what we're going to do. So if we measure distances in astronomy, we could use meters. I mean, it's just 10 to the lots. But we have a unit that means more. Okay, So we have something called a light year. That is the distance uh, light travels in one year. So that's why hopefully it makes sense. Uh, the problem is year almost implies a time. So you got to be very careful. We use LY for the short form here. So LY is a light year. And we have one light year is 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters. You don't have to memorize this. This is on your data book. Okay, this is there. You don't have to memorize it. So one light year is 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters. We have another unit we use called parsec. Um, if you've ever seen the original Star Wars movies, this is when Han Solo uh, rest in peace. Um, well, I guess spoilers. <laughs> I hope by now you've seen uh, the newest, uh, at least at the time that I record this, the newest Star Wars movie, other than Rogue One. I think the Han Solo movie is coming out soon, at least uh, when I record this. Uh, so in this, there's a scene in the original Star Wars movie where Han Solo, he's um, wanting to take people on the Millennium Falcon. That's his name of his uh, ship. Someone says, is it fast? And he goes, is it fast? You know, this is the ship that did the Kessel run in under 12 parsecs. Now, Kessel, it's all made up, right? But he implies 12 parsecs is a time, right? He says it's the ship that made the Kessel run in under 12 parsecs. Now, nerd physicists like me, uh, we take this and we say, hey, what the heck? 12 parsec, that's not a unit of time, it's a unit of distance. Ugh. So what is it really? A parsec is just another unit of uh, measurement. It's just uh, 3.26 light years. Okay, so you can always convert things if you need to. Uh, we're going to define it later when we do videos on distances. You'll see that a parsec, and we can actually measure those. Um, it's actually, what would it be? It would be the distance that corresponds to a parallax angle of one arc second. That's why we actually have the word parallax angle and second. So that's actually, you're going to see later on, that's why we call it that. But this is the unit. You can always convert. Now, let's do an exam question kind of thing. Oh, no, not yet. Wait, we have an astronomical unit. By the way, when I saw this, I know it's a bit naughty, but look at the name of this ship. I, all, I hope it's real. It's called Titan Uranus. <laughs> like Titan Uranus. <laughs> and it's astronomy related, right? Because Titan is one of Saturn's moons, and Uranus is uh, one of the planets around our uh, solar system. So Titan Uranus. <laughs> oh, okay. So we have a unit called astronomical unit, and that actually is the distance. Now it's the average distance uh, from the Earth to the sun. Now it's not exact because if you think about it, this so here's the sun, and we have the Earth going around it. It's actually in an elliptical orbit, okay? So it's not exactly, right? But we see it's the average distance from the Earth to the sun would be called one AU, one astronomical unit. And one astronomical unit is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. So again, you don't have to memorize this. You look it up. Now let's do an example. So we have an example here. A star Antares, um, that's a red supergiant. It actually looks beautiful um, in the night sky. Uh, Antares, it's a red supergiant. It has luminosity of 57,500 L with a little circle. Do you remember what that means? That's the luminosity of the sun. So it's 57,000 times more luminous than our sun. And by the way, we're told, hey, look at that. The luminosity of the sun is this value right here, right? So 3.83 times 10 to the 26 watts. Has an apparent brightness of 6.5 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared. So all the units are okay. You should always watch out for that on exams. Watch out for them messing around with units. But here they're all okay. What's the distance in parsec? Ugh, so we're being a little bit annoying here. Let's go back to that distance equation. What is it? 
it's b equals l over 4 pi d squared. So let's write that down, right? So we have b equals l over 4 pi d squared. I'll write that one down here. So b equals l over 4 pi d squared. If I want to get d by itself, I can rearrange. I can multiply this whole bottom here by both sides. So I can say 4 pi d squared. Um, and I could also divide by the b on both sides. You can take your time and do this, but you'll get this to work. Then if I want to get to rid of the 4 pi, I drop them on the bottom. So I can say d squared equals l over 4 pi b. And then if I want to get d by itself, it's going to be, well, technically plus or minus the square root, but we're only going to, going to, going to consider positive distances. So it's going to be the square root of, let's see, the luminosity, which is 57,500 times... 3.83 uh, times 10 to the 26 because that's the luminosity of the sun, right? We have to multiply this value times this value. Then we go over 4 times pi times b, which is 6.5 times 10 to the minus 8. We do this on our calculator, and I'm actually going to do it right now. So I have 3, I like to do a little bit backwards. I'm going to do 3.83 times 10 to the 26, and I multiply that by 57,500. Take that answer and divide it by 4 times pi, and we we'll take that answer and divide it by 6.5 times 10 to the minus 8. I'll take the square root of that answer, and I'm going to get a value of d equals 5.19 times 10 to the 18 meters. I do it to two significant figures, yes. So there, uh, ooh, actually I should have less, I guess I should say 5.2. So I'm done, right? Nope. But they didn't want it in meters. This is a correct answer. It's just not in parsecs. Like, ugh. So now what we have to do is convert this to parsec. Fine. So let's just do it. So I'm going to use this little trick right here. So I may as well keep all the decimals we can. This is meters. Remember the trick to converting, right? I want to put things as a ratio if I can. So I want to get rid of meters. Meters are on the top, so I'm going to get rid of them on the bottom. And let's think now. Do I know any units that have meters? Uh, sure I do. I have light years. I don't have parsec. See, parsec, I need a light year. So I'm going to start by converting it to light year. So it's 9.46 times 10 to the 15 light years. So I'm going to say that right here. So 9.46 times 10 to the 15. That's light year. Oh, whoa. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Mitch. That number goes on the bottom. 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters. That's how many meters there are in one light year. There we go. So that's one light year is this many meters. Um, then if I just stopped here, my meters would cancel out. I'd have my answer in light years, but I want it in parsec. So now I have to do that conversion, right, about uh, light years and parsec. So what's the conversion for light years and parsec? Again, you look it up. It's 3.26 light years for one parsec. So I'm going to put the 3.26 beside the light years. I guess I have one parsec. And that means now the light years cancel out. My answer is in parsec. Hooray! So I'm going to take my answer. I'm going to divide it by 9.46 times 10 to the 15. I'm going to take it and divide that by 3.26. And I'm going to have an answer of 168 parsec. I'm going to use two significant figures, I guess. So I can say, I can write it like this. So about 170 parsecs. That's how we solve exam type questions.